سوريا الأبية أبناء أمتنا العربية والإسلامية في ظل الأوضاع التي تشهدها الجمهورية العربية السورية من حرب شنت على الوطن من عدد من الدول التي تريد تمزيق الأمة العربية والإسلامية ومن خلال استهدافهم لمواقف سوريا الداعمة لحرية القرار الوطني والكرامة الإنسانية والمقاومة البلد الذي ظل شامخا عبر قرون من الزمن في مواجهة العدوان الصهيوني وسياساته التوسعية إن استهداف شعبنا السوري وجيشنا الباسل ما هو إلا استهداف للصمود والمقاومة واليوم شعبنا يقدم خيرة أبنائه للدفاع عن سوريا وشعبها ضد الغطرسة والإذلال والتبعية والتجزئة للمنطقة فهم يريدون تفتيت سوريا كما فعلوا بعدد من الدول الأخرى من خلال ذلك كله فإن مجلس الإفتاء الأعلى في الجمهورية العربية السورية يهيب بشعبنا العربي السوري القيام بالواجب الشرعي أولا إن الدفاع عن سوريا الموحدة وعن الشعب السوري فرض عين على جميع أبناء شعبنا كما هو فرض عين على جميع الدول العربية والإسلامية ونناشد شعبنا في سوريا للوقوف صفا واحدا مع جيشنا العربي السوري وقواتنا المسلحة وندعو أبناءنا للقيام بفريضة الالتحاق بالجيش العربي السوري للدفاع عن وطننا الذي باركته السماء ودعا له إمام الأنبياء ونحذر من الوقوف في وجه جيشنا العربي السوري وقواتنا المسلحة حيث يعد ذلك خيانة ومساهمة في إضعاف قوته التي أعدت وما تزال للمعركة الفاصلة ضد الصهاينة ومن يقف وراءهم مما يساهم في تحقيق أهداف العدو ثانيا نداء محبة لأبنائنا في Hello everyone, welcome to GGN Today is Tuesday, March 12th, 2013 on Garko all right, you saw that video there. Uh, it's basically a call to arms by the Syrian government. I'm just trying to show you uh, what's going on there. It's kind of happened, a similar situation happened in Libya, uh, where they were just basically arming everybody and trying to help uh, repel these foreigners um, that are being backed by the West. Then you have this article from the Washington Post. Syria pressed by war deploys all female units. The Syrian government is arming and training Syrian women to fight for Assad. Really, they're fighting for Syria, putting it out in front of the Pentagon when it comes to sending women to the front lines. So, you know, I guess uh, when the West does it, it's it's called equality and, um, um, what is it, gender neutrality and, and equal rights and tolerance. But I guess when Gaddafi or, or, or Assad does it, uh, well, then it's just exploiting, right, an act of desperation. Um, but it says here that um, they're carrying Kalishnikovs, uh, rifles performing drills and chanting slogans in support of Assad. Be prepared. Syria, stand up. Assad, they shout, with our blood and our soul, we will protect you. So they have heavy machine guns and grenades to storm and uh, control checkpoints. The formation of the forces comes amid speculation that the regular Syrian army depleted by defections, which is not true, desertions and casualties is being stretched by the effort to suppress the 20, serious 22-month-old uprising. Most of my viewers know that it's not a, a, uh, an uprising. It's not peaceful activists. These are armed, they're heavily armed terrorists, foreigners out that are not from Syria being supported by NATO and the UK and the United States, and they're being trained in Jordan by the CIA along with other entities. Um, we've even seen what uh, the article about CIA, Blackwater, or whatever they want to call themselves now, um, that they're training. They're actually carrying out missions inside. Uh, Homs is one of them. Actually, CIA, MI6, and Mossad carrying out missions inside Syria, along with these terrorists. These lionesses for national defense is what they're called. It's part of an effort to supplement the army with the National Defense Force militia made up of civilian volunteers. So... A lot of propaganda going around this, um, around this article here, because um, I saw another article about militias and Assad's militias murdering people. Um, they're responsible for it. Uh, I'm not saying that they're not, but uh, the Syrian, uh, Free Syrian Army is, they've just carried out another massacre on the river, on one of the rivers, dumping bodies. They did it a month prior, uh, like, like 40 people or something like that. Uh, so pretty grave stuff. And from all the articles and news that I've seen, um, the morale is still pretty high among the, Sy the Syrian Arab army. So uh, the fact is, is that they're just the foreigners. The amount of foreigners, terrorists uh, that are inside the country are escalating. So U.S. condemns terrorist attack on Assad's troops. So 
United States on Monday condemned what it called a terrorist assault on the Syrian regime forces who came under fire after crossing into Iraq last week, an attack claimed by an al-Qaeda group. So, Victoria Newland said any kind of terrorism like this is something we should condemn. So, how about you stop supporting the terrorists? And, you know, that would be a good start. She also renewed Washington's concerns about al-Qaeda and its affiliates that they are arming and, and basically supporting from trying to take advantage of the violence and chaos in Syria for their own ends. So they want to set up Sharia law like they have in Libya, where they just executed a bunch of Christians this, the other day. Um, and, uh, you know, they don't... So it's just, it's just unbelievable what's going on here because these people help create and sow the seeds of chaos and violence. And that's what the West wants until they get what they want, like screaming little uh, whiny brat babies they wanted to get Assad out of there. So, mortar attack in Damascus kills six civilians. And we know who those were, right? Because they had a mortar attack, just like all the other mortar attacks. They're coming from the rebels. I'm not just making this stuff up. It struck a Christian neighborhood in a football stadium, killing six civilians, winning at least 24 what appeared to be, at least they admit this, the AP, an escalating campaign by rebels to sow fear in the Syrian capital. So, remember last time they tried to blame, the, blame it on the Syrian government, when it was them to kill, uh, fired over the border into Turkey, killed some people. Turkey detains five Syria border car bomb suspects. Say so they detained five people suspected of involvement in a deadly car bombing last month on a border crossing between Syria and Turkey. So you think Syria, who's, well, like I said, they've they've been the biggest sponsor of terror besides Qatar and Saudi Arabia and U.S. and U.K. Uh, along with skyjacking and, and, and arming the terrorists and that. Uh, so you think that they're doing something good here, but actually what they're doing is they're, they're, they're saying that they're linked to serious intelligence agencies, which doesn't make any sense uh, that they would be, you know, intelligence agencies would be setting up car bombs and carrying out terrorist attacks against their own people. That doesn't really make much sense. Militants blow up Muslim shrine in Syria's uh, Raqqa. So militants, these pious Muslims uh, fighting against the Syrian government, they destroyed a holy Muslim shrine in the northern city. So that's right, they blow up Christian uh, Catholic churches as well, too. Denmark TV used game image in Syria report. So, you know, this goes to show you how bad it's getting in Syria. Um, they have a lot of uh, ancient culture there and a lot of different um, religions that have lived there peacefully for a long time. And these uh, these terrorists are taking a lot of stuff, looting it uh, to fund their terrorist activities when they don't get uh, cash uh, coming directly for like, uh, you know, the like Obama who promised $60 million. I think it was $60 million. It could have been a billion. Who knows these days, right? Uh, you know, to, to these terrorists. So until it gets there, they just go ahead and loot and kidnap uh, for ransoms and stuff of journalists. So the t Danish television channel has admitted it mistakenly used an image from a computer game to illustrate the news report about Syria. It used a backdrop behind the news anchor on February 26th. It came from an adventure game, Assassin's Creed. Another one, a video from Syrian army tank shows a toll of urban warfare, and it's about five minutes long. Go through there and check it out and just see how crappy and de destroyed it really is. Uh, Israel likely to be next target of Syrian rebels, says General. So, military chief of Israel warned that some of the rebel forces trying to uh, create a regime change for the Brookings Institute may soon turn their attention southward and attack Israeli settlements in the Golan Heights. So, uh, actually, they've already been around there and they kidnapped UN workers. It came out later that they said that they were oh they were rescuing those UN workers along the, the Israeli border. But they, the, the terrorists are there. They're all they're occupying the border between Israel. And uh, in Syria, so so when the Syrian government goes there to try to get them out, uh, everything's blamed on the Syrian government for you know uh, shelling or something like that. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm like speaking for the government here. It's just it's insane how one-sided it really is. It'd be nice just to try to get it somewhat equal as far as all the BS that is out there about what's going on. So they, they do admit today, uh, they admit here, we see terrorist organizations that are increasingly gaining footholds in the territory and they are fighting against Assad. So um, the thing is, is that, like I said before, this, this, this plays into uh, the whole strategy, defense strategy, really offensive strategy of Israel, which uh, all of their land has, uh, you know, by, for them, especially that Golan Heights, they stole that. So it's, uh, you know, it says here they captured, they stole it from uh, Syria in 1967, just like they stole Palestine. And uh, so that's how they have to maintain it uh, when they occupy a land. They have to always seem like they're under the attack. So these terrorists are actually working for the Zionists, which is so funny because these Sunni Muslims act like they hate Zionists, um, but they're actually working for them. I, I don't know if they've gotten that memo yet, but they do. Syrian rebels vow to conquer Golan refugees. And 
refuse Israeli aid. So get this, Syrian refugees might be desperate, injured, and starving, but they won't accept Israeli aid as the terrorists vow to reconquer Golan Heights. Now, this is typical globalist uh, and Zionist uh, strategy, which is... Um, which, which is uh, when you want to take over a country or whatever of, of people um, and you want to take out their leader, um, like they do it in Somalia a lot um, and in places like that, where they go in there and they bomb the hell out of you. They create all this uh, uh, crap going on. Uh, there's no trade, no economy going on because they won't allow you, right? They won't allow you to have that um, unless they have their puppet in there. So they'll just create chaos all the time and, and that's what you get. And like in Japan and in and, and Haiti, uh, what do they do? Uh, well, they do something like that where they kill a bunch of people and then they come in with humanitarian aid. So, and usually that's the people that help cause it. So, uh, these people, the Syrians aren't stupid. They know who's causing this, which is Israel. So they don't want their stupid aid, right? Uh, Perez, NATO Secretary General, discussed strategic cooperation. So Israel met with NATO Secretary at the NATO headquarters in Brussels. They discussed the importance of strengthening the strategic cooperation between Israel and NATO in the security and technology fields. So the two terrorist leaders uh, stress their concern regarding the situation on Israel's northern border. So they're monitoring attempts to build up weapons by Hezbollah and stockpiling weapons and missiles for terrorism and war. So terrorism don't like competition in, uh, in, in the market of terrorism. Attacks and anti-Arab bigotry more acceptable in Israel. So a spat of uh, attacks by young Israeli Jews against Arabs indicates anti-Muslim and anti-Arab bigotry is becoming more acceptable in many sectors of Israeli society. So they've arrested four people, including two minors, over the bludgeoning on Saturday of an Arab Israeli citizen on holiday with his wife. That was uh, at least the fourth attack in Israel in the last month targeting Palestinians and Arab citizens, about 20% of Israel's population, like I mentioned before, of 7.7 .7 million people actually. Um, uh, the uh, the Jews in, 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 in Israel actually made up about 7% originally of, of what, what they call now call Israel. So it was like 80, 80%, 90% uh, Palestinians or Arabs. It says here, settler attacks Palestinian shepherds, security officer on West Bank uh, outpost documenting attack. A uh, documented attacking Palestinian shepherd officer says he was just pushing shepherd away. After, so... The officer claimed two Palestinian children had approached the Jewish outposts. A video obtained by Ynet shows the security officer grabbing the shepherd and punching him as an IDF soldier looks on. The security officer is later seen shoving the Palestinian running towards the herd to scare the sheep away. You go in there and check it out. So another Palestinian turned to the officer and said, you're hitting him, uh, you're hitting him and he's not hitting you. There are cameras, everything. There's even a soldier here. So. At this point, the Palestinians asked that the officer be removed from the scene as he said to the Palestinian man who was attacked, you hit me now and you're going to pay. So this whole thing about this iconic photo of uh, this four-year-old that was killed was supposedly by uh, uh, shrapnel or something from, from Hamas's own um, rocket. So they said... Uh, kill their own, they use the killings to blame the Jews. That is the very definition of evil. That's coming from Israel, so I'm not going to really say anything more. Um, but, is you know, talk about using it as a political tool. It's like this thing about provoking, uh, saying that, you know, uh, you know, they're known to incite pro uh, provocations, you know. Well, that's their land, right? They're constantly being moved and fired on. They're, they're living in a living hell. Uh, so they're, they're in complete survival mode. And uh, for something like this, using it as a political tool, I guess I guess it doesn't. Uh, I guess what what since it's not a uh, real photo, it wasn't actually Israel that ki that killed the kid. Then it means that everything's all right and and that they haven't done anything wrong. Israel, that is. So Netherlands advises retailers to replace made in Israel labels. So the Dutch foreign minister uh, said that uh, retailers should replace made in Israel with labels with a label reading "product from Israeli settlement, West Bank." Golan Heights, East Jerusalem. So, the Netherlands foreign minister uh, says we do not want to contribute to the economy of illegal settlements. Then you have Israel prepares for Obama with no fly zones and snipers at junctions. So, so the security arrangements for the visit will be draconian, but police chief uh, aiming for minimum impact on the lives of Jerusalem residents. So, so it'll be handled like a military operation with no room for errors. Well, of course, because 
we fund Israel, right? No, it's a no-fly zone because seven Israeli military aircraft violate Lebanese airspace. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.